Good day everyone, for today's discussion, we are going to talk about writing the research paper, particularly about the research title, the background of the study, and the research problems and questions. Now, in answering the question how to proceed with writing, a researcher must bear in mind the following questions. First one, what issue or issues am I interested in researching? Remember that when writing a research, it would always start with a question in mind, a question that you want to be answered. Next, why am I interested in this issue? Third, who are involved in this issue? So this would talk about those who would benefit from your study as well as those who would be your participants or your respondents. Next one, what are possible claims that I may have about this issue? This refers to your theories or hypotheses or assumptions regarding the topic or issue you have in mind. And lastly, how can I gather evidences to support my assumptions or claims about this issue? Basically, this refers to your references. This would refer to your related literature or related studies that you might have in mind. Furthermore, it is important to take note of the following when writing the initial parts of the study. When we say initial parts of the study, this refers to the first few parts of the first chapter of a research paper. We start with determining the topic of interest or the research problem itself, followed by conducting initial readings. Second, we write a research title, followed by providing a background of the study, Next would be formulating the research statement and questions, and lastly, would be to formulate a hypothesis. At this point, let's talk about the first step, which is to determine the topic of interest. In identifying a possible research problem, Cresswell in 2012 suggests questions that a researcher may ask. These questions are, what was the issue, problem, or controversy that needs to be addressed? Second. What controversy leads to a need for this particular study? And lastly, what was the concern being addressed behind this particular study? Remember that when we are searching for a topic, it always needs to be based on a particular question that needs to be answered, an issue that needs to be solved, a problem that needs to be addressed, and furthermore, it must be based on your own interest. Otherwise, if you're going to search for a topic or conduct a research about a topic that is far beyond your interest, you might find it difficult to actually finish or proceed with conducting the study itself. Now at this point, let's have a short recap. When we say topic, it refers to a subject matter that is addressed by a study. Based on what we had discussed previously, a topic must have the following characteristics. It must be smart. First, it must be specific, meaning it is focused on a single topic which is not too broad or not too narrow. Second, since this is going to be a quantitative research, it must be measurable. Measurable in a sense that it involves numeric data and statistics. Next one, it must be attainable. When we say attainable, it means that it can be accomplished at a given time. Next would be results focused. A research that is results focused means that it can yield results and answer the questions that have been stated. And lastly, it must be timely. When we say timely, it must be relevant to the current situations. It is not something that is obsolete or something that has been conducted years before already. Now, furthermore, in terms of determining the topic of interest, the following steps are followed when a topic is developed. We identify a general topic of interest, followed by adding a layer of specificity to your topic through obtaining background information on the said topic. When we say specificity, you're trying to make it more narrow by adding a bit of information which you would want to focus on in your topic. Next. We identify additional specifics of your topic, followed by choosing a particular perspective or issue on the topic and identifying variables to link to your topic. This is the part when you start identifying what particular variables related to the topic you would want to study on. Next, 
Of course, you need to write a problem statement. And from this particular problem statement, you're able to formulate a working title. When we say working title, it means that it is something that is tentative, not permanent, bound to change depending on what is going to be recommended. Let's look at this example here. The first step, which is to choose a general topic of interest. For this particular example, we choose the concept of learning. Now, we all know that learning is a very wide concept. That's why we add a layer of specificity by obtaining background information. At this point, the concept of learning is further reduced into a more specific concept, which is cooperative learning. However, since cooperative learning, even though it's much more specific, is still a broad topic as it covers a lot of areas, we try to narrow it further. We identify additional specifics to your topic. At this point, we have cooperative learning environment in the subject of science. From there, we proceed with choosing a particular perspective or issue on the topic and identify the variables to link to your topic. From this particular example, we're able to come up with this one. The issues and variables that we want to study would be cooperative learning environment, academic achievement, and small group process skills in a physics class. If you're going to observe, we're able to narrow down science class into a much more specific one, which is physics class. From there, we start to write a problem statement. The example, Engagement in a cooperative learning environment will result in higher academic achievement and development of small group process skills in physics. From there, we write a working title of the study, which is this one. The link between cooperative learning, environment, achievement, and small group process skills in physics. Now, after we have identified a topic that we'll be using for the research, we now proceed with conducting initial readings. Now, you might be wondering, what is the purpose of having initial readings? Well, to answer that particular question, conducting initial readings about a research topic allows for researchers to have an idea regarding the targets of the research. Second, the methodologies that were used by other researchers when conducting a relevant study Third would be the results and conclusions, followed by the recommendations for future research and areas for further research. Pretty much conducting initial readings would give you an idea on how you'd be able to conduct your study. This would give you an inspiration regarding the methodologies that you'll be using, what kind of information you'll be needing, and how are you going to proceed with your study to avoid repetition of the results. Now at this point, after we have conducted initial readings about our selected topic for research, we now proceed with writing the research title. Now, when writing the research title, it must have the following characteristics. First, it must summarize the main idea of the paper, meaning to say it must give an overview or an idea regarding the topic or the objectives of the research itself. Second, it must be a concise statement of the main topic. Third, it must show the relationship of the variables or the main variables in the study. Fourth, it must include the main task of the researcher about the variables. And lastly, it must mention the participants generally and the setting. We take note of this term generally here because in the title, it must be a general statement. We try to make it more specific in the scope and the limitations of your research. Now, furthermore, when writing the research title, the researcher must be reminded of the following. First, in formulating the title, the researcher should avoid using words that serve no useful purposes and can be misleading. So examples such as methods, results, study, or investigation tend to be redundant because the research itself is already a study or an investigation. Furthermore, Methods and results will be discussed in the latter parts of the research itself. And in many cases, the general problem or even the specific question that the researcher intends to answer when written in statement form can serve as the title. 
Now at this point, after we have identified a research topic as well as conduct initial readings based on relevant sources of information and coming up with a research title, we now proceed with providing the background of the study. The question is what are the contents of the background of the study? Now it is worth noting that when writing the introduction or background of the study, the researcher must bear in mind the following questions. First, what is the rationale of the research problem? When we say rationale of the research problem, it simply aims to answer the question why? Why are you conducting this study in the first place? Next, what is the setting of the research problem? Identifying the setting of the research problem would help the researcher be able to explain the context of your study. Next one, what is the basic literature foundation of the study? Where can we find the information here? The information can be found based on your initial readings. That is why it is important for us to conduct initial readings so that we would have an idea regarding the information or topics that we will be discussing. Next, how serious is the chosen research problem? How important is it for us to find answers or solutions to the problems that we have presented? How important is it for us to address the topics or issues that we have identified here? And lastly, what is the general objective and overall purpose of the problem? Who would benefit from this particular research? And how would the results of this particular study bring about change in our society? Of course, after we have finished constructing the background of the study, we now proceed with formulating the research statement and questions. Now before we continue, let's try to define research statement and research questions. A research problem statement is a general statement that encompasses the main objective and purpose of conducting a study, while the research questions are questions that are anchored to the research problem that the researcher aims to answer at the end of the study. Furthermore, research questions are specific areas or concepts in the research problem that needs clarifications. Furthermore, it is worth noting that the research questions and research problem statement are interconnected, as simply, the research questions are a more specific version of your research problem statement. Now, when writing the statement of the problem, bear in mind the following. First, what are the main tasks that you're going to do in your study? So pretty much you're going to answer the question, what are you going to do or what will you do with the variables? Second, what are the main or major variables involved? Third, who are the participants? Participants here refer to the subjects or the respondents that are involved in your study. After which you're going to explain the specific setting Remember earlier we mentioned that explaining or including the specific setting would allow the researcher to identify how the study is specific or narrowed down in terms of research context. Next would be the coverage date of the conduct of the study, which would answer the question from when until when. And lastly would be the intended outputs. What are some of the outputs or results that you expect at the end of this study? Of course, when writing the research questions, bear in mind the following. Research questions must meet the following criteria. First, they must be in question form. Hence, it's a research question. Second, they must define the population and sample of the study. Third, they must identify the variables being tested. Fourth, they must be empirically tested. And of course, they must be in accordance with the research design. That is why it is important for you to identify what kind of research design you will be using when conducting a particular research. By identifying the research design, you'll be able to formulate the questions that would be in accordance with the design that you have selected. In a nutshell, as researchers, it is important to become familiar with the essentials of learning how to write the initial parts of the research paper. Being able to have an effective start when writing the research paper would help us be able to proceed to the succeeding parts as smoothly as possible.